for Jesus, we can do it better. If that cup is for Jesus, we can do it better. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come to your neighbor. Say it's good to see you in church today. Say it's good to have you around today. Can we just lift up our hands wherever we are, where we are, and just worship the Father from our spirit? Let worship flow from your spirit. I want you to create an atmosphere around you, a manifest presence of God that only you, you will experience that love of God in an unusual way. Just say to him, Father, I love you. I'm grateful for the gift of Jesus. I want you to begin to say words to the Father. Talk to him. A lot of times we only respond to what is being said on pulpit. We don't have a direct connection with the Father himself. He's the Father of all spirit. Let your spirit come in connection with the Father, with, with him today. Say, Abba, Father, I love you. You are my God forever. I worship you this morning from the depth of my heart. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your love, your sacrifice. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worship. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you speak to us. We come against every wind of destruction. We come against every wind of destruction. With meekness we receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our souls. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Do I have joyful people in church this morning? Can you go ahead and rejoice? You can be spiritual about it. The Bible says that with joy we draw from the well of salvation. Without joy you can't receive from God. If you are always moody, always frowning, always boning, always giving bold face, you can't receive from the Lord. The Bible says he that sits in heaven shall laugh. I mean, the atmosphere around God is joy. You can. The angels, they are singing. They are done. There's, no, there's no room for moodiness. There's no room for sorrow. Can we go ahead one more time and rejoice? Oh! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today's the last day in the month of October, right? No. Oh, sorry. Thank you. One more. Last Sunday, but not the last day. Today is the 30th. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it is to start the month of November. <laughs> There's a reason. Um, we started a series at the beginning of, the, of this month um, titled Walk in Love. How many of you have been walking in love? Like intentionally, you've just been paying attention to your love life, um, your love life, yeah, your relationship with people, your interpersonal relationship at work. I mean, You've been more deliberate. Like we said, that walking in love is a deliberate thing. You won't always feel like it. But that's your true nature as a believer. You have to give expression to that true nature. I believe God has a word for us this morning. And last week we examined um, a major aspect of love, which is you know God's love language. How many of you remember what we shared last week? What was God's first love language if you were here last week? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God has a love language. I know we all want to be loved. By design, we are God, we are we, we are we, we are designed to be lovers. We are designed to be lovers. There is something in man that cries for companionship with a woman. And there is something in a woman that cries for an intimate relationship with a man. By design, we are product of love. And that love is not just to be shared amongst bread, and God wants it to be reciprocated back to him. Amen. Hallelujah. First John 4:19. Can we have 1 John 4, 19? 1 John 4, 19. It says, we love him because, can I, have, can I have it in the New Living Translation? We love him because he first loved us. So that means I can only love God when I understand his own love. I can only reciprocate his love when I've experienced his love. I can only love in the measure that I've received and experienced the love of God. The NLT version says, we love each other because he first loved us. He loved us first. So there is you first. There is a place where you have to first come into an experiential knowledge of the love of God. Because until you understand this love, you cannot show it to other people. We love each other. We can love God. We can, we can, we can show him back what he has already shown to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, last week we examined um, 
this scripture can i have it again on this on the screen i'll be going back to it today mark 12 28 to 31 mark 12 28 to 31 and i want all of us to read it together mark 12 the new king james version please Bible says, then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Actually, there are about 430 throughout the law of Moses. Yes, the, 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 the Old Testament is not just about the Ten Commandments. They had several laws. Several. Some of us come to church on Sunday, especially on first Sunday, you wear your um, Ankara, you wear your um, different material, or you use a different material for your uh, rap, your head tie. Actually, in the Old Testament, if you come to the synagogue, you'll not be accepted. <laughs> you know why? Because you're, you're, it's contrary to the law. According to the law, if you are wearing a wool trouser, it has to be a wool um a wool shirt. It has to be a wool underwear. It has to be a wool shirt. Like you, 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 you just cannot. The commandment was too grievous. And thank God for the grace of God. The law commands, but the grace of God empowers us to do what has been commanded. The Lord places a demand on you to do this, to do that. But in the New Testament, God has supplied His grace that empowers us to be able to fulfill that commandment. And one of the empowerment is law. So a, a guy came to Jesus and said, of all the commandment of Moses, which one is greater? Is it the one that says that, I mean, if you're, if on Sunday, if you are coming to a church and a, 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 a neighbor, I mean, it could be anybody, a neighbor's cattle or goat falls into the ditch and you saw it, you, you are supposed to stop, help the person, bring the cattle or the ram out of the ditch before you start coming to church. Today, we don't use cattle. It's like somebody's car breaking down on the road and you're on your way to church and you say, you have to help the person. But today, we are so... Bible says that Jesus... So this guy came to Jesus. Of all the commandments of Moses, there are so many. As you are doing this, you realize you've not done this. You realize you've not done this. Which one should I pay attention to the most? And then in verse 29, Bible says, Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is it is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Verse 30, Verse 30 says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. He says, this is the first commandment. Verse 31, verse 31 says, and the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In the Old Testament, if someone's car breaks down, I have to do it because I've been commanded. In the New Testament, there is a love at work in me that will not leave my neighbor stranded because I understand that anything that happens to my neighbor has automatically happened to me. So I'm not doing it firstly. I'm doing it because I'm motivated by the love of God. So Jesus said there are two commandments that are greatest in the Bible. You, in the in, in the Lord says, love the Lord and love your neighbor. As yourself. He says, there is no other commandment. No other one. And last week we examined the first part that talks about loving the Lord. How do I love the Lord? It's not a casual thing. It's not just what we do when we come to church on Sunday, lifting up holy hands. That's not how we express. That's not the only way we can express our love to God. And the first thing we talked about was obedience. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandment. If you love me, you will keep my commandment. And how do you keep a commandment you don't know. And that's where the uh, understanding the word of God, the place of the word of God comes in. I need to give myself to the word of God so that I can abide by what it says, so that I can abide by the instructions that I'm giving in righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The first love, love, love language that God has is obedience. God wants us to obey. The Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. God, God, God lays a demand on obedience than your tithe and offering. He's not saying you should not give your tithe and offering. He says your obedience must come first. And the second one we talk about is giving. Giving. Giving is an expression of love. Giving is an expression of love. Then let us see a scripture together. The book of Matthew 6.21. Matthew 6.21. Matthew 6.21. It says, for where your treasure is, Dear, your heart will be also. <laughs> where your money is, that is where your heart will be. 
You know that, right? Yes. Some of you, you know what you earn every month. You know this the day you get your paycheck. And you're constantly checking as he enters, as he enters. He says, where you see this scripture also means that I can redirect my affection yes. with my with my money. I can calibrate where my attention will always be with my money. Yes. So let's say my, my money is here. If I go out, go there, go there, my mind is there, I come back. Now, if I want to change the location of my treasure. If I want to change the location of my affection, all I need to do is take it from where it is and carry it with me everywhere. So if you want your heart and your attention to always be on God, invest your resources. A lot of us are not heavenly conscious because we've not made investment in heaven. You are all your entire investment are on earth. But I would say set your mind on things that are both. Our minds are not always above, our minds are always in our bank account because that is where our treasure is. He says where your treasure is, that is, your heart will follow in the direction of your treasure. So if I want my heart to be on God, to be stayed on God, I will cast my treasure in that direction. So giving is a reflection of your love. It helps you calibrate your affection towards the Father. Because whatever you cannot give God has already become an idol. How much is too much? Anything that takes the place of God. God says, I'm laying a demand on your, on your, on your, and God says now today that he wants us to give a sacrifice. I remember when I was single, back in Nigeria. I mean, the Lord, one day there was a project in church and the Holy Spirit said, I want you to empty your account. Now, if you don't have money, it won't move you. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Let's say all you have in your account is just a hundred dollars. God, you want me to give everything? Let's say what you have in your account is a million dollars. And the Lord said, I want you to give everything. That is when you will. It is Lord that moves you from the realm of comfort to sacrifice. I mean, I took my ATM. In Nigeria, we don't, we use more of ATM than, uh, because, so I took I was hoping that the Lord would change his mind. <laughs> God, for you, like everything, Lord, everything. I mean, I was close to, not close to, more than, more than, like, in Nigeria, it's a lot of money, like half a million. At that time, yeah. God, you are hoping that God would change his mind because of everything. Because whatever has your attention has your life. God does not want to take God doesn't want anything to take his place in your heart. Amen. Bible says Solomon loved the Lord his God and he sacrificed a thousand bond offerings. The Lord moves you from the realm of comfort to sacrifice. Can God lay a demand? There was a day Jesus wanted to preach. He said, Peter, give me your boat. God can lay a demand on your resources. Give me your boat. I want to preach to those people. Give me your boat. Can God lay a demand on the job you are doing? Giving is an act of love. It's an expression of love. In fact, in the second hour, they will tell you, without romance, without money, there is no romance. <laughs> they say, ah, oh, women, they are too material conscious. Forget that thing. If you <laughs> forget it. Every, it's human nature. It's not uh, women, it's not customized to women alone. Because wherever your treasure is, your heart will be yours. So if I want my heart to constantly stay on God, I will give my resources in that direction. So my heart will be where my treasure is, which is for the Father. My heart will continually be stayed on God. I mean, I'm directly saying, God, nothing is bigger than you in my life. You have, see, Bible says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, not half of your heart. Not half of your attention. Not half of your intellect. Your intellect is as the best when it considers God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says that they wanted to build a temple. Solomon, David, he gave, he says, I have given because I have set my affection on the house of my Lord. He says, I have given over and beyond. Over and beyond. Not that I can afford. Because of time, I will not be able to go through several scriptures on giving. But I want to encourage you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Giving is a proof of love. For God so love that he gave. Giving is a proof of love. Amen. So if I really want to express my love to God, I will obey his commandment. I will give. And the third thing, I will serve him. Service is another lo love language that God has. Service. Say after me, service. service. Say after me, service. service. If you love the Lord, you will serve him. 
Bible says in that scripture, can I have it on the screen? Mark 12 verse 30. Um, verse 30. Mark 12 verse 30. He says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. How do you love the Lord with your strength? It's by serving him. You are investing your strength in the kingdom. Some of us, we invest our strength in the world. And on Sunday, we just come and we, 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 we play church. He says, with all of your strength. All of your strength. And let me say this. I want to address the youth today. See, old people, they have money. Eh? They have time. But they don't, they, they don't have, they have little strength. Can you bear me witness that I'm okay? Mm -hmm. How you are today, was this how you were 40 years ago? Your, your strength depletes with time and with age. But you have more time to spend, I mean, to serve the Lord. Now, middle aged people, these are people that are you know, busy in, the, in their jobs, they have kids, they have a lot of responsibilities. They have some money, they have little time. Because their responsibilities take chunk as in a big bulk of their time. And then, so they are not able to give their all. It's like uh, when it comes to money and strength, and they have, let's say it's like 50 50, but their time is divided. But as a young person, you don't have money, but you have strength. You may have 20% of money, but you have 80% of strength. God says, I'm not, I'm not asking you to give me everything you are earning, but at least you can set me with all of your strength. Can I have Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 to 7? I want us to read this together. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 to 7. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 to 7. It says, remember now, not tomorrow, not not, not in the next 10 years, because there are people that just want to enjoy their youthful days. They say, you know, when I, when, I, when I get to my mom's age or my dad's age, I'll start serving the Lord. He says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. In the days when there is still strength, when you still have the vigor. He says, in the days of your youth, before difficult days come, difficult days will come. Trust me, life is full of unanticipated challenges. He says, before difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. That okay, if I say, let's go and do carries now. Yeah. 214 miles per hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he has no pleasure. Because it's got, I'm, I'm saying, teach us to know about our days that we may apply our heart to wisdom. He knows his age now. If he does so make, if he engages in some experiences, it doesn't make any sense. He says, the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure. All those things you are doing, uh, Opinion here and there, a time will come. He said, See, it's just youthful exuberance. We all have been there. Uh -huh. Can I have the next verse? He says, Why the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain? Continue. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble, when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the window grow dim, dim yeah? When the doors are shut in the street and the sound of grinding is low, when one rises up at the sound of a bed and all the daughters of music are brought low. Next, also they are afraid of, I mean, he was just talking about the things that happen in your old age that makes you lose, lose play, as in your mind is depleted. Your strength has reduced. You don't have the capacity to do the things you used to. Says, remember now, remember now, our legacy ought to be transgenerational because the older people are serving Jesus now. They are supposed to pass it on to the younger people. Amen. Remember now the Lord your God in the days of your youth. Serve the Lord with all your mind. I remember when I was doing my youth service back then. <clears throat> I was, my church to, the church I was attending to where I was staying, the residential quarters of the copper was very far. It was like east from the west, east to the west. The distance was far. But then we start the doing service around 5 p.m. and we may not close until like 10 p.m. And I was a cop and there's a, there are two gates, a big major gate that leads into the, into the residential quarters and it's full of bush. Like, it's like you passing through a wilderness. And there's another smaller gate that they close at a certain time. So you, 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 you really do not have option in the night. You either go through the wilderness or you come through the gate that would have been closed. And sometimes, because I was in media unit, I used to project um, scriptures for pastor. And I was the only one that could do it well in the unit. 
such that the pastor told the leader to go and learn it from me. And because of that, even if pastor, I can't leave the church, I have to be there. And then sometimes we'll close around 10 p.m. And I, you know Nigeria security is not as good as the one we have here. 10 p.m., everyone, everywhere is already quiet. So I'll be looking for a cab to take me back to the, um, to the courthouse. And then I'll have to wait hours. Some days when I finally get a cab, the gate that leads into the courthouse, sometimes I'll have to crawl, uh, climb over or crawl underneath. Nobody saw those days. But let me tell you, God is not unjust to forget your Amen. labor of love. There are days, there were days God would say, go to five colleges in two months, go and, you know, preach Jesus, hosting conferences. Sometimes we'll be there five days before the meeting will start, we'll be going from quarters to quarters, um, hostels to hostels, preaching Jesus, sharing flat, doing yeah. things. People were, they, they were telling me back then, they said, you carry this Jesus thing on your head, no man will marry you. <laughs> you are laughing because God gave me the best one. <laughs> The way you are moving, the tenacity is too much. Slow down. You carry this Jesus thing too much. Let me tell you, give me Hebrews um, 6 verse 10. It says, for God is not unjust to forget your work. And your labor of love. Yes. Service is a labor of love. He says, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints, and you still do minister. It's not something you do once in a while. It's something you do continuously. He said, there are many things God can forget, but there's something he will never forget. It is your labor of love. There are seasons of your life. It is not your prayer that we answer for you. It's the service you have done in the kingdom of God. I don't regret a day serving Jesus. Amen. I do not regret a day serving Jesus. The people that laughed at me and mocked me in those days, they look at my life today, they know that it, it surely pays to serve Jesus. Amen. Talk to your neighbor, say, it pays to serve Jesus. Jesus. Someone left his glory, his entire realm came down, condescended to, to, to become a man, just so he could take your sin and your sin and my sin on the cross. He left everything, he left his glory. Bible says he was one with God. He did not consider. I mean, he humbled himself to the point of death. He learned obedience through the things he suffered. Humbled himself to the cross to come and serve you. He said, I did not come that I may be served. Jesus said, I, I come that I may serve others. Serving the Lord is a way to express your love to him. Renew your mind today. I'm going to invest my strength in the kingdom. I'm going to invest my strength in the kingdom, yeah. not just my money. Yeah. Let me tell you, most of the, the richest people today, they are very old. Elon Musk is 57 or 51. Bill Gates is 66. Warren Buffett is 92. They have money, but they don't have time. A time is coming, you're going to have more money than you have now. You're, you're trying to chase money, right? You'll get the money. But as at that time, your strength would have depleted. There will not be, you will not have the opportunity to serve God the way you want to do. A man of God went to preach in a place, I can't remember the continent, and he said throughout the mess, throughout his entire teaching, a whole, an old man was in the congregation that he wept from the beginning to the end of the sermon. And then after the sermon, he went to meet the man because he said, I saw you crying all throughout. The man was like maybe he's in the 80s or he's not in his 90s. He said, as you stood there, everything you taught us in church today was a message God gave me about 40 years ago. Everything you are doing today, everything you represent, was God told me to start doing like 40 years ago. He said, but I did not obey. He said, but now that I want to obey, it's too late. May it not be too late for you in the name of Jesus. Remember now, not tomorrow. Remember now, invest your strength in the kingdom. He says, God is not unjust to forget your labor of love. He's not on, people can forget, but there is a book of memoria, a book of remembrance constantly before God. There are those that pour their might, their strength. They invest their time in the kingdom. It's not unjust. There are several service departments in church you can invest your strength. Um, the last thing about, about um, God's love language is worship. Is worship. 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 <laughs> Repeat after me, worship. worship. Can I have Psalm 84 verse 1 to 2 in the New Living Translation? Psalm 84 verse 1 to 2. Psalm 84 verse 1 to 2. It says, For the choir director, a psalm of the descendant of Korah, to be accompanied by a stringed instrument, 
It says in verse 1, how lovely is your dwelling place. Talking about church. How lovely is your dwelling place. Let me tell you, if you have to wait for someone before you are come to church, show up in church on Sunday, you don't love Jesus. Some only come to church when they know pastor is the one preaching. See, love moves you from whoever is, who God can speak to you through any vessel. Amen. I don't come to church because pastor is here. If pastor decides not to come, I will come because I love Jesus. I love Jesus too much to sleep in my house. He says, how lovely is your dwelling place? How lovely? What would I be doing the time I'm supposed to? I mean, how lovely? Oh, Lord of heaven's armies. Verse 2. Verse 2. He says, I long. Yes, I faint with longing. There's a longing in my heart. There's something that draws me constantly to the presence of the Lord. He says, with my whole being, my body, my soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Worship is an expression of love. With my whole being. With my own, some of us cannot shout, you know, because they will probably will call the cops on you. Maybe you live in an apartment. <laughs> you will call the cops on you, but you can, in the, in, the, in the company of the saints, you can worship God with reckless abandon. Amen. No ambition, no, no interactions. You're just there loving on Jesus. But it's so sad that it is in that church we, we, we form. It is in the same church we pretend. He says, with my whole being, my entire being, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Music is an instrument of worship. It's just one of the instruments of worship. Music is an instrument of worship. Some of us, we sing secular songs more than we sing spiritual songs. And you don't know that every music is inspired by a spirit. Yeah. Every music is inspired by a spirit. It's called inspiration. Inspired in the spirit. It's either inspired by the Holy Ghost or it's inspired by a demonic spirit. Your mouth is constantly saying things that are contrary to, um, contrary to God. And you're, you're calling it entertainment. Do you know there is one of the recent albums of um, Beyonce, Denial, the lyrics of the poem says that if she uses the page of the holy book as tampons for her menstrual flow, and believers in church, you dance to those songs. You Let me show you something in the book of Daniel. Give me Daniel chapter 3 verse 5. Music is an instrument of worship. When you are singing a song, you are either bowing to the devil or you are bowing to Jesus. So King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. John to verse 5, okay. verse 4 to 5. You are 4 or 5? 4 to 5. Okay. It says, Then a herald shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. Verse 5. When you hear the sound, when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, pipes, and other musical instruments. He says, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar God's statue. Did you see that? When you hear the symphony of music, they are asking you to bow to an idol. So you think it's an ordinary entertainment. You don't know that you're worshiping the devil. Music is an instrument of worship. Who are you constantly worshiping? Are you worshipping de de demons, devil, or you're worshipping Jesus? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, talk on a stone, with all of your strength, with all of your mind. And lastly, that other part, let us go to back to Mark 12, verse 31. Mark 12, verse 31. I want to quickly do that before. Because it says, and the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Let me tell you, your neighbor can either be a friend or an enemy. We find it easy to love our friends, but we hate our enemies. But your neighbor can be your enemy. He says love. He did not say love your friends. He did not say love only the people that love you. He says love your neighbor as yourself. Whether they are good, whether they are bad, whether they love you, whether they reciprocate the love or they don't reciprocate the love. Your own command. The Bible says, oh no man, nothing except love. Talk to your neighbor, say you owe me love. You owe me love. Say you owe me love. You owe me love. And it is not it is not a debt you can pay till Jesus will come. It's something you will keep paying every day of your heart. You they say, oh no man, nothing. Except love. Except love. 
That means you hold the person kindness. You hold them generosity. You hold them to, to cover their shame. You hold them to cover the multitude of their sins. You hold them to cover their integrity when someone is trying to bring them down. You hold them love. You are constantly in the debt of someone sitting next to you. Constantly. <laughs> if I see you after service, <laughs> I bet you what you owe me. <laughs> I'm trying to say that, show me love. Show me some. Be gracious to me. Show me some generosity. Show me some kindness. Include me in your prayer time. Show me love. He says, and the second like it is, is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. There is no other commandment greater than this. Mm -hmm. There is an aspect of loving your neighbor that I want to talk about today, and that is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. Talk to your neighbor, say forgiveness. forgiveness. When we talk about love, we zoom in on, you know, you'll be kind, be generous. See, this, this is a major aspect of love. Forgiveness. Can I have Luke 17, 1 to 5? Luke 17, 1 to 5. Luke 17. Bible says one day Jesus said to his disciples, no, give me New King James, please. This is NLT. New King James. He says, then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. It is impossible. You'll be an alien in this world and not have opportunities to be, to be offended. You'll be an alien. Really. You will be an alien walking through this earth. And people will not present opportunities for you to be offended. He says it is impossible that no offense should come. As long as you are in this world, there will always be several opportunities. But let me tell you something. Offense here is from the Greek word scandalion. It means a trap you set in place to make somebody stumble. Back in Nigeria, if you want to kill a rodent, a rat, there's something, there's a gum you buy. I don't know if they sell it here. There's a gum you buy, and then you put a bait. Maybe like a fried fish, something that has an aroma that can attract those rodents. Yeah. What they will smell is the debate, the but they do not know that they, it's a trap. So they come running, thinking, oh, free food, free food, free food, free food, free food. As soon as they step their foot, they are trapped. If the devil wants to trap a believer, he will give you an occasion to take offense. If the devil wants to trap your destiny, he knows that he cannot distract, he cannot stop your prayer life. You are very prayerful. You show up in church on Sunday, you are this. But it will give you an opportunity to take offense. Yeah. And it's just a bait to trap you. So many believers in church, they are trapped because they are taking offense. Jesus said it is impossible. Offense will come. There will be betrayals. There will be frictions in your relationship. Husband yeah. and wife, they will fight. They will have disagreement. Yeah. You cannot determine how people will react to you, but you can choose how you respond to them. Amen. You can't choose what people will do to you part time. Yeah, you can't. You can't. De you can't decide how people will react or react to you, but you can choose how you respond. He says it is impossible. It is impossible. There will be frictions in your relationship. Some of you hate people that are too loud. I said I can. I just don't like her. She's too loud. See, it is not. See, the reason you hate them is because of their personality. But the whole world is full of just your personality to be a boring world. God gave them that personality to make the world a balanced place. If you only have quiet people, it will be a boring world. God says we need a little bit of spice. Let us give this one. Let's make up. They are the life of the party. They show up and you know. Glory to God. And there are people they can be in the place for 10 years. You don't even know their name. <laughs> yeah. So don't say she's too loud. God, God made her like that. God gave her that personality to spice up the world. Stop eating on people because they don't look like you. Tell them. Tell them. Hey, listen. And let me say this. Only those you care about have the power to hurt you. Yeah. Only the people you care about have the capacity to hurt you. The reason you feel offended 